I will talk about what it looks like. You've been estranged, I don't know how long for, and out of the blue, oh my goodness, you got a letter. Hi everybody, I'm Jack, Jack Goodings, and welcome back to the channel. If you've been here before, thank you so much, and I really appreciate the fact that you do come to this channel. And the reason that you come is because you want to hear about narcissistic abuse or about parental alienation. Now the two, they go hand in hand. There's absolutely no doubt that somebody can uh, alienate the child from another parent or the whole family and not have something wrong. So that's where I'm coming from. Me, I was an alienated child. I was an alienated adult. I know about the term scapegoating and the uh, um, uh, golden child and so on as well. And I'm an alienated father <laughs> and an estranged dad. And that estrangement came out of alienation. Part of it is from me pushing them away through my behaviors. And a large part of it was because of the alienation of uh, what they had, that my children, two children, had in um, the background of the false narrative, so to speak. So if you watched my last video, you'd have seen my real-time experience, I suppose, just after my, uh, my, my boy, uh, he's in his 20s, and he contacted me. And you got to see there was a whole tremendous amount of confusion. I won't go into the details about the things that he'd said or how it went or anything like that. None of this really. I'm, I'm not like highlighting any behaviors of my children or anything like that at all. But what it did bring up several questions, people saying, well, you know, what did you do? Or... Uh, yeah, well, hey, you know, this is, um, it was difficult to watch, so I didn't watch all of it. Now, bear in mind, of course, that was an instant moment of an alienated, estranged parent, myself, just after I'd received or got off the phone to my son. So that might be an interesting thing to watch if you haven't seen it yet, okay, if you have the patience to watch all the way through it. So I might <laughs> I'm not going to apologize for anything at all. I almost did. Can you see what happens? My apologies for. And that's really embedded into us, isn't it? So what I did, I went away and I had to really dig deep and think about this because I was troubled within myself. And so I sat down and I thought, you know, I've got to plan through this. What is it that's troubling me? And what ad advice, I suppose, what can I tell you? Uh, that maybe would happen when your children return and what kind of things to do, what kind of things to avoid. So in this video, you will see, I will talk about what it looks like when you're estranged, so to speak, kind of alienated, estranged child contacts you again. So let's start first of all with oh could you please like share and subscribe there's a good start right i got this pen because i'm going to be marking out i've written this down because i don't want to lose track on anything so things that i do write or do talk about i might just put a little tick next to it because i might not want to repeat it so first thing that we're going to talk about what might it look like let's say you've been estranged i don't know how long for alienated. I'm saying estranged because your child has internalized this and has said, well, this is their reasons and these are the reasons. So this is why they've taken themselves away. So the estrangement they believe is coming from them. We know that that is different. That that's not the case because when we were with them, the relationship was good and they weren't pulling themselves away from us when we were in the relationship with the other person, the other parent, the husband, the the, uh, the mother would have no doubt during the relationship at all would have made it seem like our children were scared of us, our children were afraid of us, our children are upset at us, uh, we're not parenting right, we're unsafe. Um, maybe either setting up situations or using opportunities to back away from the support that we'd usually have from the other parents and making it look like we're a bad person and you get it you get all these kind of things and i get talk for hours in a day on that one so you know where we're standing at now the children believe they're estranged and there might be behaviors that you've done unwittingly and 
when you're going through these situations, you're going to lose your cool at times. And bloody hell, you're not human if you don't. Really, are you? It's not like you're one of these people who don't have these emotions as such. You care. And that's why we, um, we kind of seem to be overreacting at times, but maybe not, but there's things that we can pull back on perhaps. This is not a normal situation. You know that. So let's get straight on that bit. What might it look like? I'm looking over at the notes over there as well. Okay, so they might come back anytime. It might be years. Now, my son, three years. And so how might this happen? It might be, they might send you a card. It might be a phone call like happened with me just now, like last week. And it might be, uh, well, <laughs> text perhaps. It might not be the nicest of text, but we'll talk about all that a lot soon. So it might be a letter. They might write you a letter. And out of the blue, oh my goodness, you got a letter. Your excitement goes up. Doesn't always go as you'd like it to go or as expected. You know, this is like, we all know, this is very counterintuitive. It, the behaviors and the ways it goes that we would expect it to go under normal circumstances, that generally doesn't happen. From what I've spoken to people about, from my own experience as well, as an adult alienated child and the parent, and from my own siblings as well, it doesn't always go well. So, sure. Uh, yeah, they might have a visit. They might leave a strange gift. Maybe you start opening the door or you just left a gift somewhere there. It might be your ex. <laughs> it might be, it might be, it might be your children, who knows, but you don't know. And uh, it might be that you suddenly start hearing beeping. That's beeping. Beep, 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 car going past. What? Who's that? Every now and then, beeping. I said they were getting in touch with you, keeping in touch. So they're keeping a contact with you. There's no relationship. Dare I say, and I'm not reflecting on my children or your children or anything at all, but reminding you of the environment that they have been brought up in, dare I say that there are could be narcissistic tendencies or it could be your narcissistic ex. Borderline narcissist is a cluster B, it's a pathology there somewhere. That's a guaranteed sure. People don't do this. If your children are behaving in these kind of ways, somewhere they've picked up this pathology. So it exists somewhere. It's not from you because you've not been there. So the words, what kind of words? What might they say in the letter, in the text, or whatever it might be? It might start off with, hi, mum. Hi, dad. Okay, and then you're thinking, oh, right, okay. Oh, my goodness, my child's contacted me. And they might just use your, your first name. Jack. Whatever my name starts off. Right there, Jack. Straight away. Ooh, ouch. No, I'm not Jack, I'm Dad. And they might say things like, um, you're missing years of my life. I'm growing old, I'm gray, I've got a girlfriend, I've got a partner, I've got kids now and you don't know. You, your grand, they might not say your granddad, but they might. Um, I'm, they, they might tell you things that you already know. They might tell you things that you, they know that you already know, but you think and you scratch your head, you go, but the, I, I know they were in this place because I helped them move. I know they got a girlfriend because they spoke about the girlfriend. They might talk things about like, um, they might mention estrangements and they might say any, anything about estrangements. You know, you might have sent them a gift perhaps and they're sending it back. Send the nerve of you all these years of not wanting anything to do with me and now you're showing up. You know that you've always wanted to be some, you know, have something to do with them in the first place always, but for some reason they're saying, Oh, how come you're not having anything to do with me before, but now you now you do? It doesn't match. None of it matches up. 
uh, they might say, do you remember this time or last time? Do you remember like what happened ago? You know, what happened those years ago? And they're holding on to that one thing of all those years ago that happened. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'll pause there just for a second because I was just reflecting back on something. Whoops, my notes are going. And they'll probably say it's all your fault, that whatever has happened, they will absolutely, they'll just accuse you of everything and you've done everything. It's completely your fault and none of it is their fault at all. They're taking no accountability. Don't blame me. It's all your fault. All right? Alienated parent, you've done everything wrong and they've done nothing wrong you know i'm being facetious there don't you i know that you i know that you've tried i know what's happened they might go straight into guilt tripping like that into all kinds of other things they'll bring up examples and all kinds of stuff my notes uh, they might say if i hold these notes down here i'll look down there they might say i'm sorry you might say, Mum, it's been a long time. Can we get together, please? I miss you. I don't think that happens rarely. Again, just from you watch the videos out there, you talk to people. So we run groups. I run groups across different counties over here. For those interested, I run the Somerset at PA Awareness uh, Facebook page. <laughs> say .co uk. it's paawareness.co.uk with a www at the beginning. Yeah, another strange one that they might say is, um, how are you? And you'll be thinking that they're saying, you know, legitimately, how are you? How are you doing? But then comes the, uh, I've been gone for a long time. You know, how are you since, I mean, since I've, I mean, I've been gone, so obviously you must be struggling. So... How are you? Because of the fact that I've been gone. You can get it. It's from a child's perspective, this is. Even though they're grown up, you understand that their, uh, that their pathology of this, it's, it's, all, it's all messed up. It's all warped. So that's the kind of things that they might say. And they're going to want you to take accountability for something. It's almost guaranteed unless... They've been able to think through it and they've realized the situations. They might actually want you to acknowledge some things that have happened uh, if, if they're being healthy enough to sort things out. They might want you to take accountability. But the problem is sometimes, OK, is when you're taking accountability or they're wanting you to, there might be some things that you didn't actually do. They might want you to acknowledge certain things that have happened, but they didn't. So what do you do in that case as well? And, and it's really crazy, actually. No, they're not crazy. It's, it's a crazy notion that they can bring things up from the past and those things didn't actually happen at all. And you could say to you blue in the face that it didn't happen, but it's not going to persuade them that it didn't either. Unless, of course, they're looking for clarity themselves, if they're trying to figure it out on their side of things. Because, again, they've been brought up with a false narrative, and that's the way that their brain has developed. These memories, they're, like, embedded. You try getting to unwrap those memories and say, well, now you're gaslighting. So they're the kind of things that um, uh, that's how it might look, you know? And now I've got a couple notes right here. I'm saying, like remember these points I've talked about the pathology that they've been brought up by narcissists and that the view of uh, of you has been warped do remember okay and that th they don't want to know your side they're not calling up generally or writing generally to ask what happened it's great if they do, I'll keep this pen down. But if they don't, and it would seem that for most part they don't, because it's it's the it's a them focus. It's just on them. Like I say, the children. It, it, Christ, they could be thirty odd years old, but they've not actually developed that kind of mindset yet. Of um, what about you? That's a empathy. 
and their empathy might be a little bit skewed. I'm not saying it always is, but it might be. But I do want you to remember as well, for them to reach out and contact you, that actually this is really brave. That's desperate almost as well, very courageous, desperate, and it shows that they've been hurting a lot. So we've got a huge responsibility right here as, as a parent, because we are still parents, and we have an opportunity as well. But, but we've, we've got to kind of have some insight in, in, in what kind of things we can do and what kind of things we can do for us to look after ourselves because we are important in this as well. The thing is, you see, is uh, it's really, it might happen and you really need to know what it's going to look like and prepare yourself as well. So we need to talk about in the next couple of videos or so uh, about the accountability. They're going to ask you for it. So what does accountability look like and how are you going to be dealing with accountability? What do we do with it? Also as well, we need to talk about responding versus reacting, the uh, the observing rather the absorbing as well. I mean, these are survival tactics, basically. And, uh, and also there's a few um, uh, dangers, a few pitfalls, and it might not actually be what you, you're thinking the phone call is about or even turn out the way that you would hope it to turn out. And we need to talk about that just a little bit. And what's really important, I think out of all this, the most important thing is you. So here we are, we concentrate on, you know, having our child back and we're missing our child, adult child, estranged, alienated child, what happens when they come back as well. But all of this, you know, you've really got to think about yourself. And so we'll have, I want to talk about that just a little bit as well, remembering about you and there's a lot to talk about that. So in a couple of videos time, I think we'll just do one video on that. It is absolutely essential that we talk about that. You have to remember, when we talk about empathy, we talk about compassion, we have to really give that to our child. And this, hopefully this union, it really includes empathy and compassion, but it also, you really have to have empathy and compassion for yourself as well. Now, that's going to ask a big thing of you, whatever that thing word is. But we'll get there. Anyway, uh, in the meantime, if you could like, share, subscribe. I love the fact you had those comments on the last one. And that last video honestly was raw. It was all over the place. So could you please like, share and subscribe and could you, if if you need to reach out to me as well, it's jackgooding65 at gmail.com. And if you need the helpline, please go to www.paawareness.co.uk in the UK. I think it's Monday to Thursday, 6 to 9 p.m. And get some more information there on the website too. And if you're in Somerset, by the way, find the Somerset Facebook page. Or if you're in the UK, Look for PA Awareness in Somerset, PA Awareness Essex, PA Awareness Norfolk. So the, the county might not exist, the Facebook page might not exist for you at the moment, but we're adding to them as we go along, okay? So until then, take good care of yourselves. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate this as well, okay? And it's great having you here. So y'all take care for a bit. It's been a bit of texting right there. That day doesn't even talk like that. So you'll take care, okay? And uh, keep well, keep close to God, and all the very, very best. Take care. Bye-bye.